Footy was arguably at its best in the 80s and 90s and Bruce Stuhl uh, made footy fantastic and special and as I said I want to touch on him in round 11 and great number 11s and here is Bruce Stuhl. Uh, so Bruce Stuhl played 356 games, four premierships for Carlton, the 1981 Norm Smith medal, a four-time Carlton best and fairest winner and in the Carlton and AFL team of the century. So what a special player this man was. We don't hear too much obviously of Bruce Stuhl but uh, just a famous name in the history of the Carlton Football Club. There's still many people out there Lordo who would say this guy was and, and still remains the best defender yeah. of all time. All time yeah. and, and, and he doesn't need to say much to be funny. Have you ever seen the thing with Sam Pang and Bruce Stuhl going around in the car for the Carlton no. Footy Club? You know it's like a James Corden thing where they go around and oh, talk. Yeah. Yeah. No, it says nothing. It's just Sam Pang driving yeah. the car. Yeah. Another famous number 11 uh, played for North Melbourne by the name of Glenn Archer. And he was part of that wave of greatness at North Melbourne under Dennis Pagan. And, and did it in a, in a very unique way with toughness and just sheer courage on so many occasions. And brought the whole team along with him alongside that man that tapped the ball there to him in Wayne Carey. But a three-time All-Australian, two-time Premiership player, six times the AFLPA's most courageous player. Just, just absorb that six times that his peers voted him as the most courageous in a season and he would have been runner-up on that at probably another six or seven times as well. How, How are, are you and Arch? You and Arch? <laughs> uh, that's another story, Kane and Brownie, but uh, yeah, but uh, all-time great North Melbourne player. We're going to talk about State of Origin footy later on and I got to play in one game with Arch, never seen a man more nervous. So he played in such an aggressive way but was such a nervous mm. type pre-game. Yeah, and mm. one of those opponents that you just absolutely feared, as you did this man, Alistair Lynch. Now, he's not in the Hall of Fame yet, but he will be. And he has to be soon, Alistair Lynch, because his record, as you go through it, 306 games, 633 goals, three premierships. He won best and fairest at Fitzroy's and All-Australian. And he led the, the Lions goal-kicking five times as well. Played at fullback too. Yeah, played at fullback as well. But him and Jonathan Brown in the real sweet spot for the British Brisbane Lions, and a lot spoken about their midfield and the Fab Four and all of that, but these two in the forward line, as good as duo is, you know, as you're going to come up against, and what an era it was for that. And Damo, how long would he have lost through his chronic fatigue? Yeah, it was, it was a good 18 months, yeah. and, and either side of it too, there was, um, you know, a, a phasing out of the game initially and a phasing back into it, yeah. which, which cost him time. But considering he signed a nine-year deal yeah. and then signed an extra deal at the end of it yeah. to make it ten, mm. uh, after all he went through, it was uh, again mm. great uh, identification by Andrew Ireland and others at that club at that time. Jimmy Stones is a trailblazer. He came out. He won the 1991 Brownlow Medal and was just so competitive and came out from Fresh Ireland. He learnt the game and obviously gave a 50 metre penalty in that prelim final but it was what he did off the field as well which people loved about Jimmy Steins. He gave himself, he gave to other people. Um, he always went on the island tours and told us stories about Ireland, how it was back in the day. He spoke about the potato famine which I found fascinating and here he is winning the Brownlow medal back in 1991. Just a running machine, Jimmy Steins. He just, other ruckmen couldn't go with him. Just such an endurance beast with the way he played the game, Jimmy Steins. Uh, round 11 moments, well the line in the sand in 2004 happened in round 11. After half time I was out there, you could just feel it. They were just wanting somebody to respond from the Bombers and it was going to be on for young and old. Obviously the story of Peter Swab, Dermot Brereton heading down into the rooms and challenging Hawthorne to stand up for themselves. We'd beaten Hawthorne I think nine or ten times in a row and they were just looking for a fight there. We won the game easily, but they believe that. These two were going out for dinner after the game, Murphy and Beaumont, and they snodded oh. each other. Dinner was cancelled because uh, they had just given it to each other. On the there. So that's history between the Bombers and the Hawks. A couple yeah. of big mark of the years happened in round 11. Nick Rewalt was the first one. Have a look at the courage of this. We just spoke about courage, but have a look at that. That is going back as fast as you can. And that was unbelievable. So to keep your eyes on the ball, poor old Tip Rain almost got knocked out himself. <laughs> at the bottom there, but that is super courage by Nick Rewalt. What a player he was. And then, um, watch it again. Go back with the flight. Perfect. Um, and uh, Jimmy Bartell. Just saw him upstairs, actually. Um, Jimmy Bartell. But going back again, have a look at this one. Jimmy Bartell back with the courage again. There's you. Uh, no, that's Adam Cooney. Oh. <laughs> There's only one brown line between them. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jimmy Bartel. Uh, yeah. Now, um, back in the 80s, of course, arguably no bigger name in football than Tony Lockett. I think you'd agree with that. And in 1988, he did his ankle in a game against Footscray. And uh, it was big news because we needed to know uh, just the extent oh, of that right. particular yeah. injury. So it was what happened a day or so later when he went in to get the scans or whatever. And there was a gaggle of journalists, including Eddie Maguire, I think, Robert! Michael Roberts was there as well. And uh, Tony Lockett didn't exactly take too kindly to the fact that uh, he was uh, being pursued by the media pack and hence mm. the uh, crutches came flying. Mm. Famous moment as uh, this one was, TJ. You were part of this one uh, in, in uh, an immediate sense with Jason McCartney after suffering the horrific burns in the, in the Bali bombing and, and then and just working his way back into uh, senior contention, being given... The go, the return game in this moment against Richmond had impact in the last quarter in a, in a famous North Melbourne victory under Danny Laidley. And then uh, upon the final siren uh, sounding, he then decided to, uh, to call it quits, having unbelievably and courageously been able to, to come back from that trauma that he suffered. You did an awesome interview after the game, TJ. Have you been part of a more emotional sort of or into you after a game. Oh, you know, even just watching then, those scenes before the game, because it was so haunting, because prior to that, all the lights dimmed as mm. we read the names of those who'd lost their lives as a result of the Bali bombings mm. and those who'd been injured. Um, uh, but then what happened was, at the I think I've told this before, but uh, at about the 20-minute mark of the last quarter, our executive producer, Cos Cardone, rang me and he said, because I was doing Boundary, he said, that interview that you're doing with Jason McCartney, which will be going around the ground, which never happened, um, don't ask him anything about next week because he's going to retire, but he's going to be doing that in the rooms with Eddie later. I said, well, what would you like me to ask him? Yeah. You know, like your favourite CD? Yeah. Anyway, so... Um, and you go, I don't care, but don't ask him anything. And then, well and behold, or lo and behold, uh, Jason McCartney just came out with it and uh, retired there and then. It was uh, a haunting moment, a haunting night, it really was, rivalled only by Wayne Carey's return yeah. uh, for Adelaide against North Melbourne.